Welcome. I'm Kim Marie, the co-founder of Parsival Academy, and I am here with one of our contributors, Liesl Teversham, and I am so thrilled to be in conversation with her today. I met Liesl actually through, um, through a, a, a collaborative group that we were a part of learning how to continue to expand our work in the world and share our gifts with others. And Liesl is a master of helping us find our strengths. I've had a number of sessions with her. I've had my son have a number of sessions with her. And we also had her work with our first round of students in our program, uh, helping students to tune into their strengths. And she works with the Clifton Strengths Finder process and then goes deeper and helps us understand how our strengths uh, show up, how they, how they energize us or weaken us depending on where they fall in our priority list and then also she she works with um, sensitive introverts uh, and helping them to feel more confident and comfortable using various processes things like EFT which for those of you who don't know that's a that's a tapping technique that helps uh, reset the nervous system and help helps us calm ourselves and we are so excited to have her sharing again with our students. Thank you for being here, Liesl. I'm so grateful you're here. Thank you so much, Kim. It's just a delight to speak with you again and to, to, to share this work. It's, it's powerful. Yes, yes. Well, I'm going to start right off with what do you wish that you knew when you were 18 years old? This is what our audiences are all feeling, right? This is what the students and, and I, I've been finding it so helpful to look back and think about that, you know? So I'm curious, what did you wish you knew or understood at 18? Yeah, I thought it was such a great question. And when I thought about it, Kim, I thought, even if I told myself that, I'm not sure I would have believed it, but I think I would have loved to just know, to physically hear it from, a, from my own mouth or from another person's mouth is that we are each unique. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to try and be like anybody else that we admire. We can admire people without trying to be like them. I was an exceptionally shy child. My whole school life, I was shy. I hardly said a word. I had one or two you know, special friends and I was not good in groups. I hardly opened my mouth. And one day in a sort of a, a, one of the higher grades, a, like I got really annoyed with somebody because she was doing something that actually hurt me on my head. And I, you know, I lashed out because like with an angry response. And she looked at me and she said, you actually speak. And, you know, in that moment, I realized, oh, my gosh, is that what people really think of me? Because I can, <laughs> and I do speak all the time, but just to the people I care about and when I feel comfortable. At that point in my life, I didn't know I was an introvert. I, I didn't know such a thing existed. So I was trying to and feeling bad about the fact that I was not as comfortable in social situations as some of my extrovert, very confident, open friends who, who made friends very easily and so that's the one thing I wish I knew is I can just be myself I can show up just as me and I have something really unique and amazing and valuable to offer just the way I am and I truly don't have to emulate anybody else in fact that's quite impossible and leads to a huge amount of stress oh my gosh I just I love what you're saying and I have to say I think, I think that would probably be one of my biggest wishes also is, you know, and we don't even think about it. So I love that you're bringing it to the surface because how often are we all trying to somehow fit into a box or follow the norm or honor the shoulds or, you know, stick with the status quo and, and, and be compliant. Um, and, and it really takes us out of who we really are and also begins to cause us to question tremendously who we really are. You know, we start to doubt ourselves. We start to think maybe we're not sufficient or adequate or whatever the case is. And, um, and, and we don't even know where to turn. And then I love what you shared about the story of, oh, you speak, because it's interesting to consider how do people look at us when we're in that kind of, you know, standing back, not really showing ourselves. Yeah, it might be because we're introverted or shy and there's nothing wrong with that. 
But there's also that piece of asking ourselves, are we really doing that out of introversion and shyness or are we doing it because we feel we aren't sure how to find our voice and how, how to show our strengths and our gifts and things like that. So thank yes. you. I think that's such a powerful thing. And, and I'm curious, what when you graduated high school, what did you feel was your, your biggest challenge as you started moving into the world? I mean, you, you shared this piece around the age of 18. Did that continue on or did you have other things that were showing up as you started moving into your late, latest teens, early 20s and, and beyond in terms of the struggles you felt moving into the world? Mm, yeah, there were many struggles at the time. I think one of them was I loved learning and I loved just learning about many, many different things. And so it was very unsure for me what to go and do. What should I like? I mean, how unfair is it when I think about it, asking an 18 year old or a 17 year old to try and des decide what on earth they're going to do now for the rest of their life. Like if you go to college, hopefully it's like getting married, right? I hope it's going to be for a long time. I'm going to spend lots of money on this thing. So <laughs> I hope it's going to be for the rest of my life. But how can you at 17 or 18 really know that kind of thing there's so little life experience so it was one of my struggles like the thing that I want to study now is that really the right thing for me I you know I had advice earlier with career assessments and whatnot you know I can go into that direction that direction this one and the one that I chose it, it was like my passion my heart's passion it was music but so many people told me oh there's no money in music you know what are you going to do you can, you can only teach that that's what you can do there isn't enough um, you know performing kind of work available you're going to struggle you know the struggling artist kind of idea so that was really one of my struggles like am I choosing something that's going to serve me that's going to have long-term benefits and not just be this little thing that I do for a little while and then I end up with nothing and 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 the shyness thing and the sort of you know being hanging around in the background a little bit that continued for me for such a long time because I can remember sitting in those classes I did go to college we call it university and where I was in South Africa uh -huh. um and I can remember sitting there and so many of the people seemed to make friends easily. They were in groups, they were talking, they were doing things together. And my nature is not doing things in big groups. And I was, I kept judging myself for that. It's like, what's wrong with me? You know, why don't I, I don't feel like I'm fitting in. There must be something wrong with me. What can I do to change? You know, I was constantly doubting myself and feeling aggravated about the way that I was not and other people are and, why do I need so much time quietly by myself? You know, just really blaming and judging and criticizing myself for not being the way they were. Yeah. So all of that was going on. It was quite a lot actually to deal with as you just start out with life and leave your parents home yeah. where everything felt safe and moving, you know, hundreds of miles away to another city, another place where I need to start carving out life. And I'm not even sure who I am, what I bring, you know, is, is this going to work? It, it was a scary time of my life. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think so many of us who've been through that can relate and feel so, and I love hearing your story. And I know you've, you know, you grew up in South Africa, but also moved multiple times to different areas since then. And that also comes with its own challenges around you know, how do I show up and relate with different people, different cultures, you're living in England now. And, you know, and, and that um, it begins to open doors as you feel more confident in yourself, understand your gifts and how you can support others. And of course, you know, we talk a lot in our program also about the idea that our wounds often become our greatest gifts, our greatest offers to the world. And what I'm hearing you say is, this, this, you know, your own discomfort, your own questioning, your own shyness, your own wondering if something's wrong with me. Oh my goodness, the beauty that you bring to others with what you're offering to help us all find our strengths, to help us all realize that the way we're showing up has nothing to do with anything being wrong with us, but rather showing us our gifts. I know when I went through the Strengths Finder with you, one of the big surprises I had, I actually had, I went, I came out of 
high school and went into college for a mathematics degree because I was good at math. So that was the encouragement, go be an engineer, go and be a mathematician, you know? <clears throat> so I did it. And, and for years, you know, that was my role. And I was into finance and all these, all these numbers, things, anything I could do with analysis. Right. And I got, I go through your, the, the, well, the test. And then we had our, our conversation about understanding different things. And I thought, I think my test is wrong. You know, I have analytical near the bottom of my list as a strength. And I've always been so analytical. And you explained to me <clears throat> that our strengths are not necessarily about what we do well, but rather what energizes us, what brings us to life, what feeds us. And mm. I just had this big aha moment of, so that's why I've been so drained following this path just because I'm uh -huh. good at it. Like, it, it, and so that's a huge, huge thing I'm finding even for my own sons as well. Like just because you're good at something doesn't mean it's what's going to nourish your soul and feed you. And so I love hearing your story of how your own wrestling has now allowed you to help us <laughs> find that, that, sense of peace, you know, and, and you mentioned you did go to university. I'm curious, did you, did you feel like it was something you, you know, would you change that? Or do you like, what would you recommend to, to our young adults now moving into the world, wondering if university is right, or maybe even in university and saying, hmm, you know, it's, what would you weigh the pros and cons of what it did for you and what it didn't do for you? Mm, oh, that's a great question. Again, I always seem to come back to uniqueness, Kim, because it's it's one of the strengths, <laughs> talking about strengths and so on. One of the strengths is called individualization, and it means we we really value uniqueness mm. and diversity, and all of it is absolutely necessary. So I cannot recommend something for somebody else until I know them a little bit better, but university was good for me, I think, in a way. <laughs> There were many ways in which I absolutely hated it <laughs> because I'm a homebody. I like to be with my close people. And here I was thrown into res. I don't know if you call it the same there, mm -hmm. you know, where, where all the students live, kind of the. Oh, sort like of, the dormitories, the residential yes. halls. Yes. That, that's it. Yes. So there I was living in a dorm and, and it was all strange people and I didn't like them and they were made noise. And, you know, so that part was incredibly hard for me. I did not like in, or enjoy that part at all all but learning sitting in classes you know learning new things um, developing myself all of those things were truly good for me because those were part of my strengths mm -hmm. so they were again I can I cannot look at life now without the lens of strengths in any experience I think there will be things that feel easier for us because of some of the strengths that we have and things that feel harder for us that are draining, that we resist, that just don't feel good and we don't want that because of some of our strengths or some of the things that's in the bottom list, uh, the bottom of the list. And so for each person, I think we need to look at their strengths as like what's going to be really good for you to help develop you because there are areas in which we will develop and grow and find like really, really energizing strengthening we grow fast in those areas we love doing them and there are other experiences that's just not going to do the same thing for us even though they are magnificent for somebody else yeah yeah so for me in one way it was a great experience I I I think I learned a lot through the experience of having to be disciplined mm. you know like whether I felt like it or not tomorrow I had to hand in an assignment and I had to sit there and get it done I want to do things to the best of my ability. So my responsibility talent helped me to just get it done, whether I felt like it or not. And I enjoyed maybe growing and learning through those experiences. But we can get that experience in other places. It doesn't have to be university or college. Yeah. Right. So there were parts of it that was uh, really, I, I am glad I went through that experience, even though I may not like I don't use that degree right now yeah. it was a music degree and I did that career for 10 years after that I moved on to another career and after that now I'm in my third career so I don't remotely used 
the knowledge that I learned there, but I think it was part of the growth experience for me as a person. Oh, I love it. And you're, you know, the name of your business, Savvy Self Growth. <laughs> I mean, oh. <laughs> you know, all about, so you're just, you're just mapping out what, what is ultimately, I think, a truth for every human being. We are on this soul's journey, this path. Of course, the path is going to be unique for every single person. But, but ultimately, it's a path of growth. It's hopefully, you know, hopefully we are taking steps to challenge ourselves, to, to test the waters, to do different things. And it's not so much about whether or not it's the thing or we stick with it or there's one way to learn it. And, <clears throat> you know, with Parsifal, we're not, we're not at all about saying, oh, college is wrong and, you know, Oh, you know, entrepreneurship is right and, and, and anything like that. What we're about so much is asking the questions, you know, mm. what, what is right for you? Because yes. there are so few places that allow students to do that. I know when I was graduating high school, it was all about, I, I don't know what you would call them. At the time, I think I called them career tests, you know, but doing things like strengths finder, I'm beginning to understand. I think those were more like aptitude tests. Um, yes. And aptitudes are more, what am I good at? Yes. They're not about what is really our passion or our values or our core strengths or our, um, the way that we can relate best with others or even how we show up in the world and what that looks like. And so I'm not saying aptitude tests are horrible. They might give us a, a great beginning. They might give us a hint on, well, at least I'll be good at this thing and I can get a job and make some money with this thing, you know, but mm -hmm. what's going to make us happy. And I know, I know one of my big um, ahas in wanting to create this program was reading statistics that were saying there were various articles I'd read and different numbers and, but they were all around the 75 to 85% range of people unhappy in their careers. Like when surveyed, you know, when thousands of people surveyed, that many people are unhappy in their lives. They're not feeling fulfilled and yet they feel stuck. They feel unsure of the future. And so, you know, one of the things we have is, is a socio-entrepreneurial slant to our program. And socio-entrepreneurialism, we define it on our, <clears throat> excuse me, on our website and, and we're, you know, sharing that it's not just about learning to be an entrepreneur, but rather this idea of thinking for ourselves, questioning, mm -hmm. experimenting, mm -hmm. cultivating resilience, expressing our creativity. These are all, all very entrepreneurial um, skills that we can do, whether we want to have a business, own a business, create a business, et cetera, ourselves. I mean, the reality is creating a business is not easy. It's not an easy path at all, but it can be a, an extremely fulfilling path when you know that you're doing things in the way, in a way that align, aligns with your strengths, your talents, your values, you're choosing yes. a place to make a difference and finding your place and, and your offer in the world and how those things, the needs of the world and your offers meet with each mm. other. I'd love to hear a little bit about your entrepreneurial experience and just, you know, even how you define this idea of socio-entrepreneurialism, because I think it's different for everyone, um, whether you're having a business or not, but I'd love to hear some of the gifts and experiences and even strengths that you've been able to express and develop and cultivate through your process of, of even just being an entrepreneur. Mm, wow, this is a big topic. And <laughs> let's see if I can find a few thoughts to come out of this brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I have to say, so, okay, let's start with a, the the definition is for me, it's it's something around when we create a business and our first desire is not to make a profit, but it's to make a difference in the world mm. in a place that, that needs it. There's so many challenges in our world. And, and I think it's being 
shown so dramatically these days because we have access to things like social media and lots of news channels and you know lots of people can talk about that out in the open in the public so we all get to find out about these things and the divides are getting bigger and there's louder and louder voices opposite sides so there's a lot of problems in the world at the moment a lot of places that need some care and help and support and people to think in different ways about it because the thinking like Einstein says the thinking that got us here in the first place is not the thinking that's going to get it out of it so we need to think in bigger ways bigger picture you know new ways new ideas and I really think some of the young people growing up today are the people who are going to help us out of this mess that <laughs> the um, past has created for us and so, so that's my definition of this that the, the big term yeah. um, making a difference in a place with your business while making a profit so we can make a profit at the same time but that's not the main aim yeah we have this aim of making a difference in the world somewhere in a place that needs it and my journey with this was very much oh my goodness um a really hard journey because nowhere did I learn about business I knew always in my life probably that I wanted to make a difference but I had this career in music first and then in programming where I got paid so it was easy you know the money just came when I did the work the money was guaranteed every month and then I figured out actually I care about people and I want to help make a difference in people's lives in a very specific way and I had no skills and tools for business so it came the knowledge and the information came in drips and drabs with lots of I don't want to call it failure but um, difficulty challenges like I don't know how to do this well how am I supposed to find clients then if 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 you know I can do the work I can do I have the methods and the skills to help people but where are the clients how do I find them so there was just so many things I had to learn Kim so I want to say actually that having your own business is probably one of the biggest growth and development journeys you can undertake and it, and it is it's highly recommended that it that it comes with wisdom <laughs> about how to how to find the lessons in the things that we go through and so I think some of the things in Possible Academy that you're going to be teaching and sharing with young people are just magnificent things to learn together with well what do I what do I want to create in the world then how do I want to show up and what business is possible for me that's going to fit my strengths one of my strengths maybe I can just share this little personal bit is one of my strengths is the empathy talent and often in the world where I was in the corporate world and programming that's not really a talent that is very um, valued let's say you know it's all about let's keep the emotion out of it and let's look at the logic and the you know business and we have to get the work done and you know tick the boxes and we're getting somewhere and we're making progress and all of that and it's one of my biggest strengths. So for so many years, all of my life, probably, I had to almost like suppress that part of me. And have, like, I had this feeling like I'm too emotional or I get so emotional when there's an ad that's playing, just a happy ad or a, or a sad <laughs> ad. So, you know, it's such a big part of me couldn't play in the world. Yeah. And when I found my strengths, it perfectly fitted in with the work that I'm doing now. And that is part of why I'm so happy. And it feels like this is the work that I can do this for 30 years, for 40 years. I, I'm not going to get tired of it because it is sustainable for me. That's the difference between ability that we can find in our bottom talents, the things that even drain us. We can have the ability, but is it sustainable? Mm. Our strengths show us what is sustainable for us. And that's what we need to do to earn our living. Mm. So... I, I, I don't know any more if I answered your question, but <laughs> there it is. That's a fantastic answer and so many great nuggets of wisdom in that because, oh my goodness, even just the idea that what is sustainable, I mean, so much of what we are about as, as a program, as a journey is about supporting young adults to be sustainable in the world. And I think many parents are now looking at this world and going, oh my God, what are our kids moving into, right? And, and we've all 
struggled in one form or another or at one time or another in our lives with, with you know, finding that sense of, um, you could call it positivity or, or um, hope for the future. And I think with everything that's been happening of late, you know, we chatted a bit before starting this call about just the changes in the climate patterns and the incredible heat that some people are experiencing right now and the rains that some people are experiencing or the just the oddities that are really challenging people just on that level. And, um, and then you top it off with the economic challenges and the, you know, our pandemic challenges and, and our educational challenges. And there's so many things. And I think you know, as adults, you mentioned, you know, you think that many of the youth will be ones coming in here, you know, with new ideas, new ways of thinking, not bringing the same old thinking that we've had. And yet, you know, we as parents, as adults, we are, are trying to say, okay, how do we let go of our own ideas of what needs to happen and let them take the reins and let them move forward. But more importantly, what Parsifal's hoping to do long term is to not just let them take the reins, but actually know how to, how to steer them, you know, how to work with them. Because that I think is the big challenge is there can be a lot of expectations placed where the idea is that, well, we're just hoping they're gonna come in and save the world, right? There's a lot of hope in general in people wanting someone else to save them. You know, the next president, the next prime minister, the next this is gonna be the one that makes the difference. We are so much about learning to be the ones within ourselves, you know, the old Hopi prophecy, we are the ones we've been waiting for. This idea that it's, it's about tuning into what we have inherently and aligning with that. And I just love what you said about how the, that alignment can help us be sustainable for the future and work in a sustainable way. And maybe even love our, our jobs, our positions, our careers. It doesn't even have to be entrepreneurship. It can be simply finding a job that feels like we're actually energized. Like at the end of the day, we feel a sense of accomplishment. We feel some, like we've contributed something. So I, I love it. It's so beautiful. I'd love to just ask what made you want to contribute to Parcel Academy? What was your, your I guess, inspiration toward that? I'll answer in multiple layers. The first one is you. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I truly love your passion for life, Kim, and all the wisdom that you bring, because I see I know your strengths. That's background, hidden information, secret information, as I know your strengths and I know your passions. And I know that what you are involved with is, is something that wants to make a difference in the world. And that feels very aligned for me and my values. Mm -hmm. So I can put my whole full being behind that. And then I was also thinking about the young people and the huge challenges that they are facing right now and learning to kind of navigate, having wise ways to navigate all those challenges is so important. When I think of myself at 18, I did not have any of that. We were taught knowledge in school, not wisdom or thinking for yourself. We were taught to regurgitate. It's like, here's a book, learn the thing, here's the test, just wrote what you learned. That's not going to help us to navigate all the massive challenges we're facing right now. So if I had somebody at that age helping me to get out of the bind of you have to just learn what you taught, swallow it, and then regurgitate it, I could have had a pretty different life because all my life lots of it was just about I have to stick to the rules I have to not disappoint people I have to um, you know just don't make waves a lot of my talents are like that as well it, it wants to keep harmony and peace and so on at all costs sometimes but that does not give us often the outcome that we want Mm -hmm. So if I had people around me who were wise and who could teach me these ways of thinking in different ways, encourage me to think for myself, tell me that I have strengths, just even that sentence, you have strengths, let's help you to find them. Yes. Things like that would have helped me so much to navigate some of my own life's challenges yeah. and to stop doubting myself so much. So I want to contribute in that way to help other young people find that those bits maybe a little bit earlier in their life so that they can go forward with more 
I can like myself. I, I'm, I'm okay just the way I am. And I can bring value with what I have now. I don't have to do another course, another, you know, nothing. I, just the way I am. Wow. Brings massive value. Can you imagine the world if every young adult was moving into it saying, I like myself, I feel good mm. about who I am and what I can contribute. And I'm just going to allow myself to experiment, explore, have patience for things to fall into place, but I'm okay. I'm good enough. I'm not going to keep beating myself up or questioning that I'm not enough or any of that. I mean, what a gift that would be it just that alone, yeah. that alone, you know, and I taught a course yesterday with a, another group of young people for an organization called Trellis. They're in high school. And um, we, did a, we did a session, it was an online session of, of young students talk, talking about finding the middle way and going into these ideas of what does that look like? How do we find that balance? And what you said about this idea of, you know, aligning with different people with different strengths, you know, to, to help us bolster our own as well. Um, yes. Something I learned about years ago that I also teach about is something called the the t um, the temperaments and and different archetypal embodiments that we can work with in our being, and every person has a temperament or a combination of them that are strongest in them. Yes. But the goal is ultimately to have a balance, a well roundedness of all of them, or be able to understand how to work with them. And I even see the strengths finder process as as some of that you have this you know the the the, the input you you offer re gives you back 34 different different talents skills strengths as they call them and it's not that we're necessarily supposed to be you know uh focusing on all of them but what i love is the idea of understanding how they all live in us how mm -hmm. we could work with others to relate in these ways um I know you mentioned that, you know, harmony and wanting that is such a powerful piece in yours. And I always thought it was in mine. And when I took the strengths and it was harmony was lower on the list for my strengths. And I thought, oh, Liesl, does this mean I don't care about harmony? You know, and I, you said to me, no, it means you challenge the status quo. And I thought, oh, that's me. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, and so it's so beautiful to begin to say it's not right or wrong. It's what we can bring to the table. And I, I think I'm pretty sure my number one strength um, is connectedness. And, you know, and so that idea of connecting all the dots, connecting each other, connecting ourselves to the earth and what's happening in the world at large without getting immersed in it or enfolded in it so that we lose ourself our sense of individuality yes. and uniqueness as you so be beautifully put it at the yes beginning. and i want to bring one other point because it just reminded me when you said something there is that in strengths coaching or the strengths world we talk about your biggest difference from me is your biggest service to me Ooh. oh so again please say that yes again. that is just profound for me your biggest difference from me is your biggest service to me. So that really speaks to me of how everybody's uniqueness is what's important to bring. Is your lower harmony and my higher harmony, does it, they're not in opposition, but you bring something that I can't possibly bring and I bring something that you can't possibly bring. And together we are stronger, but we need each color in the pencil box. We need all of them. And that's what makes it so powerful for me is we all have different strengths. And I, I don't want anybody to try and have a well-rounded strengths picture because then we lose the uniqueness mm -hmm. and we, we lose the, the power in their absolute uniqueness if we all try and sort of, you know, be blue pencils. Yes. Um, oh, so, yes. So well said. And, yeah. you know, it, it almost brings tear, a tear to my eye because when I look at the world right now and how divisive everything is, mm. differences are something that are, are being shunned in this divisive world. Yes. And what you just said is like a healing balm to what we're dealing with here. Not mm. only to honor our own differences, but to accept the differences in others. Such mm. a beautiful thing. And it's really this capacity to understand that that, that you certainly have brought to my life as well as 
mm -hmm. um, what you're bringing to the world. And so I am so glad you are bringing this to Parsifal Academy. I think, mm -hmm. I think that is a beautiful note for us to conclude with. I'm just curious if you have any last thoughts or wishes for our young adults as they make their decisions moving into the world. Mm. Mm. I would say find a little something about yourself that you really, really love and enjoy and keep focusing on that and know that experience is the thing that gets us through life. It doesn't always come all at once, but just, I, I think your academy is about that as well, Kim, is the experimenting, curiosity, being open and asking the questions. And it doesn't all drop into our lap one day and then we're done. It, it comes with experience and experiences and maybe some what we call mistakes, but it's all part of that journey that we need to walk. And it's all an individual unique journey. Yes. Oh, honor our uniqueness. Keep walking the path. Thank you so much for being here, Liesl. This is such a treasure, such a gift. And I know so many will benefit from hearing your words of wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Kim. It's just a delight.